to my little tutorial about the cross-eyed stereo view. I'd like to show a simple way how to learn it, show some examples and explain a bit about it. So our natural view is convergent. That means we are focusing some points with convergent eyes and therefore for stereo images the cross eyed view is the best way as well. However, it's not that easy to learn and I'm going to explain why. So quite often it's recommended in order to learn you could use your thumb and uh, there's uh, some steps. Hold your thumb close to the screen in the middle between the two images on your screen and then move the thumb towards your face keeping it in focus and then you might see that there are coming up three images is three images a third one in the middle and when you are able to focus the image in the middle this will be in 3d a stereo image however the problem is the focus level that we have finally and the convergence distance my thumb are different and that's different from our normal view and this is not the only issue so viewing angle focus in different distances the other thing is each of our eyes see that there are two images on the screen they are, they are side by side and we would like to look at this and this and focus on this and that and not just have one eye looking at one and the other eye looking at the other image. And when we succeed in getting a 3D image, yeah, we have three images side by side and only the one in the middle is in stereo, but the others at the sides are not required at all. And if you have technical devices like this 3D viewer, there's some lenses where you can uh, fiddle your smartphone in. This is better because these devices only show one of the images to each of your eyes. But there are also limitations. The size of the image is limited. But definitely many more people can see 3D with such devices. And my question is, can we get this without a technical device? Can we get a stereo image without size limitation? Yes, with cross viewing. And there's a simple technique, and it's just the manual covering of one of the image for each of our eyes. So you can use your hands, you uh, move the left hand to cover the left eye partially so that this can only see the right image. And then you use the other hand and move it to the middle until the right eye can only see the left image. And then it's easy to get a 3D. Here it is. And uh, you can make it bigger. And uh, I can remove the disturbing hands here. And now you can relax and try, do I get it? Actually, I get it easily. Okay, I'm trained on that. And the advantage is, first, each eye sees only one image. That's like with the technical devices. And if you have only two images that the eyes can see, it's easy for our brain to try to overlay them and to get a 3D. Yeah, and it's uh, so that you can show it on big screens at the wall in the seminar and wherever you want. Okay, and another good thing is you won't need your hands all the time. Once you have learned the cross-eyed view, you can leave out the manual help after a short time. 
you will be focused on the stereo image in the middle and not notice the other ones anymore. I promise. Okay, a short chapter on the parallel view as well. And there you can also get a better impression with your hands, with the praying hands in front of your nose. You can get a manual support. And I explain it here. So we have the same problem with the parallel view that both eyes can see both the images. And you could try to take something like a cardboard here. And I'm going to try it here. And actually it's too thin and it's difficult to keep it in the right position. And therefore it's not so good to use. Much better is the praying hands because I can adjust the width so that I really, really can separate the two images, move a little bit close to your nose, and then you can get a better 3D image from that. Again, the disadvantage of the parallel view is that it's only suited for small images because with big images, we would need divergent eyes to get this, and that's uh, very difficult. I can't do it, many people can't do it, and if you do it, it's really unpleasant. This is much easier than that, and therefore it's not so much recommended. Okay, now I have some examples for cross-eyed stereo images. All of them can be found on the Picolet DE page on galleries HTM. And uh, I'm going uh, rather quickly through these images. You can stop the video if you need some time to to get the 3D impression. Just this, this. I see only one image, no side images. It's beautiful in 3D. Next one, another diatom. Works perfect. Next one, this is a dinoflagellate. Yeah, you can see the top and bottom part in the middle, that's a protoplast. So this cell has been sheared during the preparation under the microscope and it's uh, now showing perfectly the architecture of this cell. Yeah, one recommendation, if you start to learn it, just use specimen that are having a quite uh, clear 3D structure so that you even without getting the uh, stereo effect already know the structure quite well, then it's easier for the brain to make a 3D image later on. And this is very easy. This is little snail litorina and uh, a housefly. Yeah, it works. And some green louses. Yeah, the poppy capsule with the bug, the baby bug. You had this, now the close up of the same scene. It works. And that's it already. So just visit PicoLADE to find more examples or the microbial world or the microbiological garden. Good luck with uh, your crossed eyes and thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.